Um, the past couple of days I've introduced how you would find um, the maximum or minimum values on a given function on a given interval and um, we played uh, particular attention to finding critical numbers so what we're going to do is use our knowledge of critical numbers and uh, find the local extremas on a closed interval okay so the best way to do that would be to start with a problem okay so um, let's start with this problem we have f of x is equal to 2x squared minus um, 4x cubed okay and our interval will be from negative 1 to 2 okay so now the guidelines for finding extremas on a closed interval which you could find in your textbook but um, it's very important I mean you're gonna need it for the test so it's very important to um, memorize it pretty much or just remember the steps the first step we're gonna do is find our critical numbers which is what we've been doing okay and this is pretty much the entire bulk of the whole problem once you find your critical numbers then it's just uh, plug and play so um, let's just find the critical numbers for this given function so we always need to take into two cases um, to find critical numbers right we need to take into a case um, when the derivative is equal to zero uh, the derivative of this function and when the derivative is undefined and we went into further detail about that a couple of days ago but what um, the quickest way for me to explain it is that when you're at a maximum or minimum um, uh, point on the graph for, on, for the function your the two choices for the derivative is that the slope is going to be equal to zero of the tangent line or that you're not going to have a slope or you're not going to have a defined uh, slope for the tangent line and the reason being is that I'll draw it right here um, if I give you two, these are two examples of a function. So, so this function here, we see here that this, the tangent line or the derivative, which we call slope, the slope would be zero because at that highest point, now it's not drawn as a, the perfect horizontal line, but the highest point there would be no slope, okay, because you're at your max. Um, and then the other example is when it's undefined, is when you have a graph where there's, um, where there's like a a point or a jump a break and this is a this is an inverted uh, version of the absolute value we could see and at this point we wouldn't have the slope here because it's so jagged uh, there would be an undefined slope okay so we couldn't really find define the the derivative of that so that's the two cases we always need to take into account okay so let's first before we take into those account that those cases into account we'll find the derivative okay and the derivative of this is f prime I'm going to use power rule this should come to you pretty easily is 4x minus uh, 12x squared. Okay, you always want to take this into account too, this interval. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this. When you're looking at a function, you always want to see if it's continuous everywhere, okay? And we can see here, because this is a polynomial, that no matter what value of x or any um, number in the real number line would work here. So this function is continuous everywhere. So we could just put as a side note that its domain goes on from infinity to uh, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, it's just a side note. Even though we're dealing with this closed interval, it's important to note where it's con uh, where the function is continuous. Okay, so we have our our derivative. Um, we see that we need to take into two accounts when f prime of x is equal to zero and f prime of x is undefined. Okay, I'll just put that, uh, finish it out. Okay, but what we just saw here, I'm um, taking into this account, is that there is no value of x that would make this undefined. That there's no value of x in this domain. So just like the polynomial here, um, for its derivative, uh, any x in the real number line, or from negative infinity to positive infinity, would work, and there would no, there would be no x here that would make this. Um, undefined. You'd either get a negative value, a zero, or a positive value. So because of that, we don't have to worry about this case, okay? So I'm just going to cross out this case because we're done with that. We don't need to worry about that. So we only have one case, really, where the derivative is equal to zero, okay? And because we set our zero uh, derivative equal to zero, we also know what our derivative is equal, right? We know it equals zero, and we know that it's 4x minus 12x squared, okay? This is just critical numbers, so we need to solve for x. Uh, the first step I always do is get rid of, you know, you want to simplify x, simplify the coefficients. So divide everything by 4, okay? We divide each side by 4. We're pretty much factoring out of 4. 
we get uh, 0, let me put it here, 0 is equal to x minus 3x cubed. Now all I need to do now is factor out an x we could solve for x, okay? So we have 0 is equal to x 1 minus 3, I'm sorry, this should not be a 3, this should be a 2, I'm sorry about that, um, 3x, right? Okay, so now we just need, these are two cases, so when our first case is when x is equal to 0, and when 1 minus 3 x is equal to 0. So we already want a critical number, or we at least we think it's a critical number, so when x is equal to 0. Solving for x here, we have um, negative 3x is equal to negative 1, and x is equal to 1 thirds. Now when you're doing critical numbers, we always need to find, we always need to check if the critical number we found is in our given interval in the beginning because you could find critical numbers for the functions. You might find 10 critical numbers, but maybe only two are are in this in closed interval you're given. So those are the two you're going to be using. You can't just use all critical numbers because um, the critical numbers, they're, they're at those points, that's when the max and minimum values are. And if it's not in your closed interval, then you're just including um, more critical points than you need and it's going to throw off your answer. So we need to check. Is, is zero in this interval? Yeah. So zero is in our interval. Um, from negative 1 to 2, and is 1 thirds in our interval. Yep, so we have our critical numbers here. Um, from our critical numbers, let me just do it aside. Okay, the next step is to set is uh, step 2, which I'm going to combine, is to find, uh, evaluate f at each critical number, okay, and evaluate f at its endpoint. So we have our critical numbers, we have f of 0, because that's our one critical number, um, f of 1 thirds, which is our second critical numbers, and we need to uh, include the endpoints that they're given. So we need to f of negative 1 and f of 2. We need to include those endpoints because um, usually endpoints of a given function are local extremas or local maxes. So we need to account for those because it might not be the max of this in, this function on or min. Uh, of this function on this given interval, but it's definitely a local extrema, or it usually is always a local extrema, so we need to take into account for that, okay? So f of a 0 evaluated at this original function, now we're not using the derivative, just the original function, so plugging in 0 into 2x squared minus 4x cubed, we get 0, simple, okay? Now we have, uh, for here, we have uh, plugging 1 thirds into the equation, we have 2 1 thirds squared minus 4 1 thirds cubed and that sums out to 2 over 9 because the 1 thirds I'm, I'm squaring that 2 over 9 minus uh, 4 over 27 okay and let me just, I'm going to put this here, okay? I'm sorry, it's a little confusing, but we have 2 ninths minus 4 over 27. Uh, 9 goes in 27 three times, so we have 6 27ths minus 4 27ths, which equals 2 27ths. And that's for, um, that's for f of 1 thirds, okay? So we need to evaluate this now at, for negative 1. So negative 1 squared is 1, so 2 times the negative, uh, 2 times 1 is one is just 2, minus uh, negative 1 cubed is negative 1, but a negative uh, multiplied by a neg this negative 4. So we're left with plus 4, which is equal to 6, okay? And evaluating this at 2, 2 squared is 4, and 2 times 2 squared is 8, minus uh, 2 cubed is 8, times this minus, uh, this negative 4 is, um, is it? 8 minus uh, times negative 4 is uh, 32. Okay, and we're left with negative 24, right? 32 minus this negative 22. Yep, uh, negative, am I right about that? Okay, 32 minus 10 is 22. Yes, negative 24. Okay, so we're left with that. Okay, so we have now our 0 is our 1 value. Uh, we solved for two twenty seven, two over twenty seven there, and six is our ma uh, six is our other value, and a negative twenty four. So out of these two, we need to find what is our biggest and what is our smallest. It's obvious that this will be our smallest. So this is our min, okay? And our biggest out of all these numbers, six seems to be our biggest. So that is a 
our max. Okay, that's how you would do it um, for a polynomial. And this is an example of how to find local extrema. And um, it's very important. And it's this is our first application of derivatives. And so we have to make sure that you understand the concepts here. Um, but as you see, once you find the critical numbers, which is the bulk of our lesson, um, it's just plug in. You just plug in the critical numbers and you always plug in the endpoints, okay? And from that you find your maximum value and your minimum value, okay? Um, I hope this tutorial has been helpful and uh, if you have any questions, I'll see you tomorrow in class. Have a good one, guys.